The shapes of walls can be changed as you're actually adding them. So um, if I was creating a new track here, a new wall there, and I wanted to change the shape of that, I can do so. Um, alternatively, if I just get rid of that wall, um, what you can do is use this uh, wall shape editor, and um, that actually allows you to add more detail. You'll notice a small black circle there, that's the, the first of the surfaces. You can add another surface here, tell it to set the shape, and then raise it up in the air, and um, it just interpolates between them there, and then we'll interpolate back to the last one. Uh, set another one here, tell it to set the shape, and drag those back down. You can see the effect more clearly. You can move these surfaces about, and um, they can set the materials too. I'll show that in more detail in another tutorial, but it's uh, similar similar ways of adding these things as to the wall nodes. You, you hold down control and, and um, click to add one, or um, press the delete key when it's selected to remove it. Uh, the same goes for the dots in here. They can be added by holding down control and moving them about like that. And so you've got more of a pipe function there. Um, and you can move these about fairly easily. So you're going to be able to create all sorts of interesting shapes there. The other thing you can do, as you might have noticed, there's some randomness there. Um, so if you've got those top two points selected and you want to add horizontal and vertical randomness to those points, you can do so just by entering in new values there and you can see it's very wobbly from that point onwards, so from wherever our surface is, it's wobbly there. Something you might notice uh, is that the randomness is actually seeded, that means it will remain the same each time. Um, when you load up your track the next time, this wall will have the same kind of randomness that it did before. Um, so it'll, if you like the way it's looking you can uh, keep that, otherwise you can change the value here and it will uh, change again to a different shape. And um, there's one more feature there which you might have noticed is the grounded feature. I'll just um, remove the surfaces a little bit so that you can see this um, how this works a little bit more clearly. We'll just drop it back to one surface. Um, we'll remove a couple of materials and a couple of points. The points again can be deleted by highlighting and then pressing delete. Um, so there we've just got the, the two points. And uh, before I set that I'm just going to change the wall so that it's no longer resting on the ground and um, we'll lift these up up a bit. So that they're actually off the ground and then uh, back into the shape and for only the bottom one I'm going to select it as grounded and you can see that's pulled the vert down onto the ground so that every occurrence of that is actually finding the ground and, and putting it on the ground. Um, that's useful for if you're using materials where it's you know, shaded darker at the bottom and you always want that to be sitting on the ground, then it will regardless of how far apart these nodes are um, or where they are. Um, now that it's not grounded, those nodes are moving in, in uh, the flat surface um, in the horizontal plane, or if you hold down the Y key you can move them up and down, but you see that that lower vert is always sitting on the ground and um, that could also be useful if you're, you're setting materials on the ground um, especially semi-transparent ones um, where the, the shape um, is sitting on the ground and, and used as a um, skid mark or decal on a wall or something like that you can you can flatten them down and have them sitting on the ground. And um, that's about all I'm going to show in this video.